All right. Well, welcome in, Porch. Welcome in, family. I'm Red Dirt Preacher, otherwise known as Laney. And your best friend. Come on and now to be my best. Laney, don't sing. <laughs> All right. Um, for those of you that know me, you know that often I, well, I have come to you guys and done what I call hashtag spiritual meteorology because as, you know, for having a spiritual mantle, that allows me through the Holy Spirit to um, see forward um, because the Holy Spirit allows it. And every time that I'm allowed to see forward, um, rather it's uh, you know our global nation or our, nas our national nation here, when I'm allowed to see forward, um, I basically call that meteorology because it's like telling the weather and um, sp the spiritual weather that's coming. So that's why I call it spiritual, spiritual meteor meteorology. And basically what I'm telling to you, telling you is that, you know, Holy Spirit, um, when he, when, when the Holy Spirit allows it, I'm able to see forward. And I've brought you guys a few messages already, and they, they're not really stuck here on the porch. They're actually over on YouTube. So everything that I make here on the porch stays for about a month, and then I move it over to YouTube, and there's a collection of over 100 videos that, that span, you know, almost two years. So... Spiritual meteorology is something that I've already I've already mentioned before. So to a refresher course and remind you, um, I named this video the plains, like back home where I'm from, Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, you know, stuff like that. The the plains. Um, I told you guys before, and again, it's in a YouTube video and in cool detail many 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 months ago. So that's what's neat. But um, I'm gonna refresh this right now. Hmm. So, we're going to jump over the crazy line. I'm not going to defend the things I'm going to say. I'm just going to step out and say them. Last February, January, February, I was visited by my great-great-grandmother, who was 20-some years old, raising two kids during the Dust Bowl. I interviewed her and when I was in sixth grade because she was in a, in a nursing home and still had it. So, uh, I asked a lot of amazing questions and did a, a biography on my grandma in sixth grade. I got an A. But I also learned a lot about my grandma that year. So, um, now that I'm spiritually astute, um, last year, my great, great grandmother's, uh, loving spirit visited me and, and told me a few things and that video in detail can be found on YouTube. But what she did tell me was simple things like dust bowl. Now I thought that, that maybe, and that's why I can't ever really bring my own thinking to what, you know, your A-team, what divine and what 5D is telling you, because it's like us to bring our our 3D knowledge to a 5D plan. So as she told me, you know, uh, Dust Bowl, she also mentioned uh, root cellars. And, you know, I'm a generationally gapped kid here, so a root cellar is where you dig a hole in the ground and uh, you keep your food underground and then you put a wooden door in front of that. We're talking all the way back to, like, what, you know, back in the old days, old days. So root cellars before refrigerators. She mentioned root cellars to me and she mentioned uh, the Great Depression and she said that we were going to go back and back and back. And anyway, so there's that. But as I sat here in the spirit, like I always do, he wanted me, Jesus is pushing me to make this video. And I even sat with it a minute. Like, are you sure? Just go, Lenny. Just go. So um, I want to say right now that Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and I know that what they've got is, is a bunch of frigid snow. I get that. But uh, as I sat here being, you know, pestered and touched by spirit, he's wanting me to make the connection that maybe when I was told a year ago about the Great Depression that we would find ourselves in, I'm kind of, I had eyes for it. I'm looking for it. Like, oh, okay, the air's going to got the air somewhere in some states is going to get full of dust and people can't be able to breathe because that's like, that's like the dust bowl. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. And that kind of happened um, last year with uh, California, Nevada, Washington State, and with all of the wildfires that really consumed the east, the, the western uh, coastline, the western states, and um, doing and in doing that, it filled the air full of smoke. People couldn't breathe if you lived on the western uh, coast last year. Okay, but now the fires are out. We sit and pause for a minute, and now it's the central United States that is getting covered in snow from 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 crown to root okay from the toes of texas all the way up to the hat of, of of north dakota um america is just covered in like this new ice age and i think what, what spirit was trying to get me to do was to parallel the warning i got before about the great depression and connect it to the snow event that's happening here at, right in the middle section of the united states and i was like okay 
and walked that out. It's only been like 10 minutes ago I got the fullness of that. So before I even walked it out completely, I just went ahead and pushed play. And y'all could be here while I, while I figure it out live time with Spirit. So the reason I think that he's allowing me to parallel the two is because like the Great Depression, uh, this is really entombed entombed people into their homes and uh back then in the great depression it, it did the same it entombed people in their homes it hurt crops well so does this frigid ice block um it also um stops people from working it stops everything it just comes to a screeching halt and that's what things did in the great depression they kind of really came to a screeching halt and I know back then that we had the stock market crash and we had the Great Depression and that's what really pummeled America. Um, we've had COVID. We've had this pandemic. We've closed a lot of things. Economically, we're kind of uh, on wobbly knees here, if not on our knees. And we're really, we're afraid, we're separated, we're divided. Um, there's a lot, a lot of chiefs, not enough Indians, you know, not to be, don't get all PC on me. So anyway, we are already in a fragile state. Um, so maybe all of that was our financial punch. And now we have uh, a Great Depression sitting right now in the plains, Colorado, Kansas. Like I said, from the hat of North Dakota all the way down to the toes of Texas. We have the middle section of America really choked out and entombed in their homes. Choked out because the roads are impassable. Choked out because gasoline can't be refilled. This, the stores can't be refilled. The shelves can't be refilled. People are out of gas. People are out of food. And here's the irony in the situation. They don't have water, yet that's exactly what they're going to be consumed by. And also, this is, second, this is the second piece. I mentioned um, in my newer versions of spiritual meteorology, which means I put one out maybe a couple months ago, that was uh, more entailed, and it talked about how Jesus was telling me about a flood. Now, I don't think he's doing like a physical, like we need to build an art kind of flood, but he was telling me about a flood, an inundation, and, and that's what it was more. He wanted me to hone in on the word inundation because that's what a flood is, is when you're being inundated. And I asked Jesus, I was like, inundated with what? Like inundated with awakened consciousness and it confuses the world? Like inundated with what? You know, what are we going to be? It could be anything. It could be anything from physical water to a spiritual feeling. What are we going to be? flooded with what are we going to be inundated by and jesus told me then it's you know up over the dam whatever it is is going to be up you know up over the dam and then inundation and i thought okay maybe we're talking about the three gorges dam you know so this is why this is why I, I don't ever try to pin it down what it is i just take the word and i tell you we just watch it happen it's almost like being able to wholly revelate or, or hear from god is like almost like being john madden like, I can draw the X's and O's and the plays and stuff, and we'll just sit back and watch the play happen. And so what he what he's telling me here, he said, Lainey, don't you remember when I brought to you Great Depression? Yes, I do. Make that connection right now and know that's where you're sitting in the world. And in, in, in your national, you know, world, where you sit with other Americans, that's where you sit. Welcome to your Dust Bowl. I was like, oh my gosh, because that's so true. So with things being cut off, with crops being destroyed, with people not being able to go to work, with families, you know, and homes literally being destroyed, the absence of water, the cut off of food, this is very reminiscent of what the Dust Bowl did to people on the plains. So well, we just need to hang on to grace and, and, and you know, as we swing through this. <clears throat> Jesus also brought in play here the idea that he's like, Lainey, remember when I told you about the flood, you know, a flood and, and, and release your... Uh, release your I, your want to draw the word flood to water, okay, physical water. That's what Jesus told me, so I'm telling you. So he told me, he said, you know, remember when I told you to look at the word flood so you can understand inundate, in, to be inundated. And so I'm like, yes. So he's bringing that in now saying, you know, the plains are inundated together and inundated with many problems, not just only uh, snow and ice and things like that. The irony, and again, I'm going to bring it up in a holy way. The irony is that they are out of water, yet they're going to be consumed by water. So I think what we're seeing here in Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, is is people's houses literally being flooded one by one by one by one uh, because their pipes are being burst and the streets are being flooded. And so they're out of water, yet they're consumed by water. And all this water sooner or later has to melt. So it is just an ongoing process. It's really um, this this wasn't just a snowstorm, I think, that we should really turn a blind eye to. And um, it was historic for a reason. 
everything that we do in the future as we go forth, because God is here now on the land in the form of energy, living consciousness. And um, every time God shows up, the devil shows up. So we got a lot of God's energy right now. It is strong and it's thick and it's what 1111 is. See, there's the beep beeps. It's, it's the 1111 uh, code is what I woke up on, and I tell you guys all the time, that's the living consciousness of Christ, it's spiritual awakening. He is a spiritual path. This church represents those that are taking a Christ-conscious spiritual path in their life, an awakened, I'm awake, kind of spiritual, uh, a spirit being spiritually awake kind of life. No longer asleep at the wheel, you know, getting drunk off the matrix. So... We understand now that everything that we go through in the future, at least I'm telling you, this is coming from the Spirit, everything that we do in the future is really going to be um, a training. We're going into training. And for, and, and for those of you that can't hang, you'll be washed out. And and so we're everything that we go through is going to be a filtration system. It's going to make us grow, and we're going to have to, we can't go around it. It's like a bad breakup, baby. You're not going to be able to go around this. not going to be able to go anywhere but through it. You don't just get over something. You don't just go around something. You guys are going to go through these things. And it's going to feel like shit. It's going to be painful. And um, as we go through this as a global nation, um, again, we're going to go through these things together until we build empathy, until we learn to have empathy for each other. So <clears throat> how long we stay in a place of pain bent pretzel is up to us. You know How long it takes us as a global nation to learn empathy one by one by one. Um, so as we go through tough times, uh, that's the reason we're going through tough times. That's what causes change. That's what causes growth. And that's what causes unity and empathy and understanding and all the fruits of the spirit that we need to be having here between our own brothers and sisters. That's what makes a very lovely world. So what does this have to do with, with Texas and the Plains? I already said, and I'm I, through the spirit, he's saying that this is the, the cold great depression and what has happened here is Basically, unknowingly, America has taken a big punch in the face. This isn't just your natural snowstorm. This isn't just. And as we go forward, our holy dad says, stop looking at anything like it's just another tornado. It's just another El Nino. It's just another political. Everything now is bringing a little extra pizzazz. Everything now is on steroids. Whatever just showed up said, hold my beer. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, everything that we go through is going to be quite either biblical or quite historic. Nothing that we go through here in the future, and as we step on in our, our next 24 months, 36 months, as we walk together through um, these pain points. There were stations of the cross before Jesus died on a hill. Okay, And we're going to go through our stations here before we have this lovely little exit that we're all planning. So um, this is a get, you know, get, get your shit together. Get right. And what we're doing here, I live in Georgia, and yes, I have family in Texas. Yes, I got friends and family in Oklahoma, and that makes me care. Um, there's a lot of people that don't have friends and family. Um, I don't know how we could, any, any of us could have friends and family that are not in, uh, involved with the snow, because it's pretty much everywhere but Georgia and Florida, so I, you know. <laughs> but anyway, we could end up doing what we always do, which is out of sight, out of mind. And, oh, it's not hurting me, so I'll just keep, you know, Ted Cruz. I'll just go to, I'll just go to Guam or, where was Ted Cruz going? I don't know. He was like, where was he going? Like, Jamaica or, I don't know. He's going somewhere warm. And Ted Cruz needs to represent and be there for his Texans. So, anyway, we can't just skip this and just go around it. And, no, we have to go through this. And we're going to go through this together. And, what you know, what I'm saying, the reason I brought up Ted Cruz, I'm not going to politically bang on anybody, but we're, he almost did what, what God doesn't like us to do, and that's out of sight, out of mind. How come, what I don't want you guys to do is, is see uh, the Wings of Grace Orphanage and that we, that we, the porch, uh, support them. I don't want you looking at them like, oh, well, that's out of sight, out of mind. I don't see the children. They're not in front of me, so therefore I can be dislocated from it. I can disconnect from it. I don't have to. And that has been our human problem. We forgot that we're, we're um, golden thread connected here. COVID, I don't care what your, what your, uh, leave your head and your politics out of it. COVID was supposed to teach us that we're all connected. And I think it tried to do a really good job. Like, don't touch that doorknob because I'll touch that doorknob. If I touch a doorknob in Japan and you touch a doorknob in Montana, you see how we're connected. COVID did teach us how quickly and how fast that we are all truly connected. And, you know, when COVID first happened for us in the States, we were looking at people in, over there on the eastern side of the world going, wow, that sucks. Sucks to be them. Glad that's not us. Out of sight, out of mind. And we had no idea that just in four, five, six, seven months that the person sitting next to you or the person in your family wasn't going to be there in seven months because of the same sickness. 
They had no idea. It was out of sight, out of mind. It, it doesn't have, I don't see it. It's not in my face. And, um, Jesus really wants to break us from that out of sight, out of mind. It doesn't bother me because it's not in my house. It's not biting my foot. So out of sight, out of mind. And that's why we don't long-term and genuinely care for our long-term brothers and sisters out there in the world. Nah, I don't see them. It has nothing to do with me. It's got everything to do with you. <laughs> so, um, I don't want us that live outside of these states that are going through a cold dust bowl. I don't want us to have an out of sight, out of mind mentality that that doesn't really bother me. So I'll just keep doing what I need to do. Um, also, I want to tell you something. Also, I'm going to close my eyes as I bring this to you because, you know, spirit's bringing it to, to me now. You're, you're watching him work. I know it's not exciting as you thought it was like, what's it, what's it look like when you hear from God? Look like you're sleeping, talking, <laughs> like you're sleep talking. Anyway, um, so close my eyes so I can really keep, tune in on him. Um, he and I've said this before in, in other videos that I, I did spiritual meteorology in, so they're on YouTube, but I'm going to mimic what I had done before. Um, picture a map of the United States and Jesus has cut that into th thirds. So we have a, a nice, uh, chunk of land, you know, that's, uh, from the West coast, you know, right at, um, what Arizona, Colorado line. I mean, just give you a third of the United States there. And then cut it again, and then you have the central part, pretty much the United States, Great Lakes, you know, just kind of cut it all the way down. And then the, the last half, the, the, well, the last third that you have over here is going to be the eastern coast. You know, I'm included in that. Um, Jesus told me a long time ago, because this is in one of my videos from many, many months back when I did spiritual meteorology on the Lord's Accord. So what I'm saying is a full repeat. He's reminding me again the truth in what he said, and he said... Um, each section will go through its own hell. Each section will go through its own pain uh, station, like stations of the cross. Each section that he just pointed out is going to go through its own pain points. Okay? So, if we, and he did say that a long time ago. Put it in the video. And now that it's been some time, that is very true. So, if, if I take what he said, and I take the part of the United States that is the western side, like he said, what did they, what happened to them? Let's input a variable. What happened to them that was a pain point? That entire section caught on fire last year, and we all watched it happen. The entire section caught on fire, and it was historic. Okay? They put the fire out, and that's it. Families through hell. I mean, you guys have forgotten already, because that's the human nature. We have absolute amnesia, and it happens really fast. Like, did you guys just forget that the western side of the United States completely burnt down a few months ago? Oh, Yeah. You know, for us that were um, out of sight, out of mind, we didn't get imprinted by that. But the people that lived there, they definitely got imprinted by that. They lost neighbors. They, they saw people burned out in cars. They had their houses burned down. They were stuck with their kids choking on a lake. And, you know, the, go look at the pictures and stories and remem remind yourself how what a pain point that was and how, what a life-changing event that was that changed lives and families forever, what, what those fires did. Now, now that we, we put that out and we have a hush-hush, now we come to the central part of the United States and if we take what Jesus said, he said he, he, he cut it in thirds here, and everybody goes to their pain point. What is the, the plains, the Middle East, you know, the Mideast, what, I mean, the, what do they call it, mid-central plains? So what are they going through right now? They're going through a massive pain point. You know, they're really doing the same thing that happened uh, with the fire on the western coast. They're, they're without food, water, losing their homes, and they're dying. Well, that's exactly what's happening in the, the central part. So once this goes away, um, we're going to feel the residual effects of the, of the cold dust bowl, just like we did back then. We're going to feel the effects of that. Prices of things are going to go up. Prices of wood's going to go up. Prices of things at Home Depot is going to go up. You know, a lot of prices are going to go up. And now that truckers can't get into a lot of these states, the price of food's going to go up, the price of gas is going to go up. So we're going to kind of step into a place that's really dangerous and uncomfortable that we've actually been in in the past. Now, if we move forward, so um, we look at the eastern coast. Like, what's going to happen there? What is our pain point? I say our because I'm in Georgia. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Is that the flood? Do I get a big tsunami that just comes and hits Florida? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's not really part of my job is to find the exact thing. My job is to hear the bone of it and just wait and watch God do the flesh of it, um, what we see of it. So the underneath is, I do know that each section, it's coming true. And I think I put this video up like six or nine months ago where I already spoke about these things before I had variables. This was like before the fires. So it's funny that I'm actually being brought to talk about this now 
um, and Jesus is pointing out that was fire. This is this is water. You know, uh oh, what, what's the next one? <laughs> you know? So we all are just going to go through some growth, and nothing causes growth but uh, uh, like life changing events. So it's uh, going to happen. We can't change it. You can prepare the best that you can, and 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 it really at this point. Um, if we just follow some holy notion here and some common sense, what happened to the western states? Well, they all caught on fire. They needed to have extra extra uh, gasoline to get out. They need to have an evacuation plan. They need to have water and food. Um, okay, so what's going on with the with the middle section in the United States? Well, they should have some food, water reserves, gasoline reserves. So if we see what uh, the other two already needed, then for everybody that lives on the eastern coast, I mean, I don't know what's coming, but I know we have a a station here, a pain point. It's our turn next, and um, every three, six, nine, so <laughs> holy design. So now you know to go ahead and face forward and go ahead and don't be a dumbass and get yourself some food, some water, some extra gas, and, and be ready for whatever kind of uh, thing that the Lord throws at us, you know. And I'm not um, heaving, you know, crying, and it, because I know that everything the Lord does has great alchemy. And um, either we see our weaknesses, we see our strengths come out when, when uh, so... You know, there's that. Anyway, so much love to America right now. I know that we're under God's hand, and I know that America wants America to be back under God's hand, and we want a revival for that, because we feel like, uh, collectively, that we are not sitting underneath God's hand. As much as we want America to be back under God again, we do. Well, don't worry. He's here. And, and Jesus is doing a wonderful alchemy on the globe. He's doing this in every nation. But he's, he didn't forget to do it to our nation, too. And what is he doing, Lanny? Oh, he's loving us through our own medicine. He's going to love us through it. And what I know that he's doing is in my own life and a lot of your lives, for those of you that follow the chakra walk and understand that there are pain points to your spiritual awakening, okay, this is not a journey for unicorns and lollipops. This earth like hell. And that's what I meant. Like we can experience such hell when we are going through a spiritual awakening and, and a good expel fear. Let's do that. And let's grow, you know? So when you get out of the, you know, not, not that we're ever truly out of our spiritual journey, but it does make us a spiritual badass, right? We have some spiritual IQ. We are smart and intellectual, spiritually intellectual. And, um, that's exactly what Jesus and his whole family is all about. Let's get you some spiritual intellect, get up into school here. So, what I'm saying is, is God has great alchemy, and what he's doing is he's cleaning us. He's cleaning us. That's what the fire did. That's what the water's going to do, and whatever the hell the East Coast is going to do. He's cleaning us. He's debriding us. Ooh, watch the holy. I love it. See, I was on two-cycle oil, and now here comes Jesus. Now we're driving a Hemi. Let's go. Thermal runaway. You guys remember when I put up just a little bit ago. I'm going to close my eyes and let this go fast. Um, I put up a video uh, about a month ago called Shedding Velvet. I talked about the antlers. Um, losing their velvet and how I had never been a hunter. I've never hunted anything. My family's not hunters. I shouldn't know the terminology. But then how Jesus had come in that night and gave me a holy revelation on how deers lose and get debrided of their skin. And I showed you guys pictures. I said, look at this. If we saw it, we'd be like calling 911 on the deer's behalf. You know, and really, it's kind of painless, and it's really, really natural to have skin hanging off the off the bone. And I talked about how Jesus Christ was our original antler. He allowed himself to be brided off the bone, uh, debrided for our sakes. You know what I mean? And I remember talking about that. So that's what, and I even said in that one, um, Jesus, holy reminder, he's reminding me right now. He's like, Lainey, what, what was the message you brought? I actually was spiritual meteorology then by warning you guys that we were going to go through a season of shedding velvet. And I'll be darned now that I can put the two together with a holy right here. He's saying that's exactly what I'm doing. East Coast, middle section, you know, West Coast, that's what I'm doing. I'm debriding you. It's not going to kill you. This is going to hurt. Uh, we're going to lose some stuff. You might lose your home. You might lose your car. You might lose... Um, hope, might lose faith, you know, these things are going to grow you, and uh, the humanity that's going to be built from this back, the empathy that's going to be built from this back, and, and, and America should be uniting, and uniting under pain and loss, uh, you know, you're like, oh, that's a sad reason, let me, let me do what Jesus does, if you've got a couple Vietnam soldiers, and they're out there, or anyone who's really fired a gun and carried a flag for this nation, any man that, that has uh, come back from war, um, how did he make brothers? How did he make brothers 
uh, between his between all these strangers. He was literally on a field of life or death, life or death, life or death, bullets whizzing by, bullets whizzing by. Because I can't probably speak for them, but I can only try to understand how many times that these two strangers uh, looked at each other with fear in their eye because bullets were passing them by and they experienced that together. And now when they come back, war's over. Are these two not brothers? They are blood brothers. They are brothers for life. Why? Because they went to hell and heaven on a battlefield together. That's where they found their brotherhood. They come back thicker than family. And that gets made because they're on the battlefield together. So, um, America, you know, I, you know, citizens, brothers, sisters, we are on a battlefield together. We're always on a battlefield together. We're on a spiritual battlefield together. And we're on a, a, an empathy learning battlefield together. We are here together. Don't, uh, don't forget that. So don't do the out of sight, out of mind, because what's happening to the we is happening to me. And what's happening to me is happening to we. Now, nobody can get some selfishness here. We are all in this together, one way or the other. So this is happening because we're debriding. And we're debriding of, for reason. And, and why, does a, why does a deer debride of that nice velvet on his antlers? He debrides to have that white bony structure so by fall he can protect his herd. And so he can fight for a female so they can make more babies and continue being the species they're being. So he needs that fuzz to come off to expose the hard bone that's ready to take a stand, okay? And so what is Jesus doing for us? I think he's debriding us of some fuzzy little velvet so we can show the bone underneath so we can stand square your rack, right? So you can handle your own battle. So you can, you can quote, fight. And I don't mean like, oh, let's, let's fight. I'm not, I'm not Trump here. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't throw me over the wall. I didn't tell you to go fight. Um, but we need to stand strong, and I know that's what he's doing. So don't fear as each state and each little section goes through their own pain, their own pain points. We're all going to do this. And what this is also, that's macro. Here's the micro version. You have chakras, whether you like them or not. Just like, you know, I have people are like, I don't believe in chakras. Well, I don't, you don't have to believe in gravity for it to pull your ass down. I don't have to believe in the snub-nosed dolphin because I don't see it every day, out of sight, out of mind, but it's existing right now in another parallel universe called the ocean in a world that I'm never really going to visit. But does it exist? Yes. I'm not a dumbass. I can read an encyclopedia. So there are things out there even though they're not in our face, okay? So for those of you that do the chakra understanding, when um, God also does dissolution of kingdom, okay, when, Lainey, what is that? Layman speak. When God comes through and knocks you down in your life and everything and you have to start over and it really hurts. <laughs> yeah, that one summer. I'm sure you have a t-shirt for that. Um, when that happens, we start understanding that we're healing our pain. We're, we're, we're growing desire in our belly for a different life, for better for ourselves. Um, we match that with creativity. We put that on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And then we come from our heart center, our desires. And our throat speaks our, our truth and what we desire and who we love and what we don't. And we start changing our life by speaking out loud. We're not afraid anymore. And when that happens, heaven gets involved and starts leading you by the heart and the, 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 the chest. And, and you listen and obey. And the next thing you know, you got a great life, right? That's what this is about. And that's what Jesus is doing for us. Now, the chakras, uh, when, we, when our lives fall apart, basically, our chakras are our, our stations to the cross. Our chakras are our pain points. You heal up those seven points of your soul, seven points of holy surrender. You heal those up. And, and you're walking, you're walking with, you're walking with sunshine. So as a, as a global nation and as, as United States nation, we have chakras too, you know? So, um, how are we going to fix us as a nation? Well, I'm sure the holy curriculum and the holy medicine that is of this spiritual journey, the same medicine that did it, what it did to me, I know is the same curriculum that you guys follow. They did this, you know, Jesus did the same medicine to you guys. That's why your stories, a lot of the time, we reverb and echo each other. And we're like, oh, that, that's exactly what happened to me. And that's exactly what, yeah, because Jesus is running this thing and everybody's getting treated the same. Every, yeah, we all have like different little paths, different mailboxes, same road. And um, so micro, he's pushing each individual through pain points. And if you haven't noticed, he's forced you into some foreign places in your life. Probably you lost your job or probably making you move or probably making you innovate your way out of frustration. So he's making you responsible for loving yourself. He's making you responsible of defining yourself 
uh, this year without all the stuff you have and the friends you have because there's been a washing away of that. Now people have to define themselves by just being themselves, you know? So we're coming into new ground. Anyway, um, he's making a parallel that the things that we're going through, especially right now, in the right there in the central United States, they're being debrided of, they're being debrided of, of, of things. And, and what those things are, that's between God and Texas. That's between God and Colorado. That's between God and Oklahoma. That's between God and Kansas. But we as brothers and sisters in light can understand that they are going through a life change. Okay, something you went through in what, 2014, 2015, 2016? That's happening to a whole swath of people right now during this cold dust bowl. So let's have our hearts open for them. And um, don't be afraid of the medicine that's coming because it's only going to make us greater, a greater nation under God. Right? In Jesus' name, that's amazing. So I will pick this up and I will talk to you guys soon. <laughs> Patrick, what are you talking about, zombie deer? That's really funny. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? Zombie deer? Right? Oh. That'd be messed up because you'd be like selling like zombie jerky or something and then the whole world, see, see that's how it happens. I'm not buying jerky now. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, well, that's the, that's the storm warning. So tell who you must and embrace where you should and, and call up people and see how you could be of service, how you can be a light bulb in the world. And um, definitely you could start with prayer. So it's not that we need to pray to avoid and pray for these things not to come. Don't pray to not face your fears. Pray that God's will be done and that we face our fears together as a great nation and that we start to understand that we're learning empathy, learning unity, uh, learning brotherhood, sisterhood, and we're learning how to care even when it's out of sight, out of mind. Amen? Amen. Because we're connected.